Hello guys, this is Awkward from Awkward Investing, and this is my video on week the weekly recap of 4.16, so this last week. I'll be going over in this video all the events that occurred that were interesting to me in the stock market last week, as well as any big financial news involving corporations and etc. We'll start off with IPOs, the biggest being Coinbase, which is going to be an interesting one to talk about, and we'll do that later in the video. And so if you like this content, please hit the subscribe button and like the video. And if you have any other ideas for videos in the coming weeks, drop them in the comments. Otherwise, enjoy and let's get into it. Other than that, let's get started. Let's get to the start of the week and let's see what happened. So to start off the week, the first and most important thing that happened during the week was the Coinbase IPO. The Coinbase IPO was a highly anticipated IPO of the Coinbase platform, which is a cryptocurrency exchange that lets you buy all sorts of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and about 50 others. You also can use Coinbase to convert from one cryptocurrency to another, or to send and receive cryptocurrencies to and from other people. Coinbase was actually really anticipated because as a brokerage platform, it actually turned a profit and managed to profit last quarter, as well as totally blasting Q1 2021 revenue estimates this quarter. So everyone was really excited for Coinbase IPO, and as soon as it IPO'd, it tanked. This tank is accredited to the fact that people were excited for the IPO, they were able to pick up some shares or they were able to dump shares that they already had, and then uh, everything returned to normal. Overall, Coinbase's IPO, I would give it a 6 out of 10 on excitement, and I obviously want to pick up some shares because it's an interesting company and I really like it, so I'm going to be doing that shortly. Another truly interesting IPO, and the one that actually profited the most for investors that were in pre-IPO, was eBet. eBet, also known as eSports Technology, is a Las Vegas-based company that specializes in online gambling for eSports and competitive gaming. Investors were really hoping for the relatively tiny company to cash in on the accelerating trend of eSports and gambling and to make a load of money during IPO and then overall in the long term make a lot of money from its various services. eBet is really a long term company and uh, so far I think it's an interesting company. I'll have to look into its financials to really know but from the outset, from what I can see from the outside, I think it's a really interesting company and I'm definitely going to be checking it out. Another notable IPO this week was Too Simple. Too Simple is a is a autonomous uh, technology company that is revolutionizing the estimated four trillion dollar global truck freight market. Their their goal is to make autonomous freight trucks to uh, revolutionize the freight trucking industry and take over and become the market leader. This IPO was to get capital so they could go towards that goal. From the outset and from what I read, what I read up on about Too Simple, I really like this company. I want to read its financials. I want to read its S1. And if I really like it, I'm going to be buying some shares. It seems interesting and I feel it will be good for the future. Last IPO but not least, it is App Lovin. App Lovin, founded by Adam Farogi, who became a multi-billionaire after the IPO, uh, founded App Lovin, which is a, and I quote, is a global technology platform that provides mobile developers the most powerful integrated set of solutions to grow their business and this is from their website so app Lovin is basically a way to monetize your crappy uh, iphone app and make it you know make you money so that's basically it i think it's a has a good future and i would look into its financials if i were you now on to actually more interesting news in interesting news, there's Roaring Kitty, also known as the GOAT Deep Fucking Value, forgoes quick GameStop option a payday in the millions raises stake. Basically, that's the title of the CNBC article. What it means is that Deep Fucking Value exercised his 500 GameStop call options and gave him 50,000 more shares. He's right now around $19 million in the green, and it looks like he's in it for the long haul. We hope to see him be a hundred millionaire. We sell sheep. My prayers go out to you, my god. Also, another thing I forgot to mention about the Coinbase IPO is that Kevin Durant is actually an investor in Coinbase. He invested in 2017 and his stake is now worth 53 times what it was worth then. People assume he invested around $1 million, which he did for Postmates and other investments. So if he did, they made around 53 mil from this through his venture capital firm. 
in the war to privatize space, Elon Musk dealt a blow to Bezos' Blue Origin by beating them for a NASA contest to build the astronaut lunar lander. Elon Musk won the contract and is worth nearly $3 billion, which is a lot of money and it's a lot of potential revenue for SpaceX. So I can't wait for SpaceX to IPO so we can pick up some of those juicy shares when that happens. Talking about SpaceX, there is a, a new satellite internet company it's called Astronis. It raised $250 million from BlackRock and others at a $1.4 billion valuation. Um, its approach features small form factor satellite placement in geosynchronous orbit, orbit plus proprietary technology to deliver faster connectivity to specific areas. It's a competitor to SpaceX's Starlink platform, and I think it'll be an interesting addition to the whole space internet situation. Now... On the continued topic of space, we've got another billionaire-owned Sierra Nevada Corporation creating a new space company to bet on low-Earth orbit economy. It's a 100% owned by a husband and wife team. They're both billionaires, and and in very Elon Musk fashion, they want to create habitable and interesting industries in low-Earth orbit. Wish the best to you both. Last but not least, and in my opinion, the weirdest piece of news from the stock market, the New York Stock Exchange launches first trade NFTs of Spotify, Snowflake, Unity, DoorDash, Roblox, and Coupon. NFTs, also known as non-fungible tokens, are a type of digital asset created to track ownership of a virtual item using blockchain technology. This is a really interesting development or a product released by the New York Stock Exchange. Basically, you can buy the very first trade and commemorate it on the blockchain. And I think this is an interesting product, but it's kind of weird. I don't know who personally wants to buy um, this, but I don't guess there's people out there that want it. Um, this news, I didn't intend to add it in this video because I've been working on this video for around a week now, putting all the sources together and putting in the, my favorite articles, but um, this one came in today. Dogecoin spikes 400% in a week, stoking fears of a cryptocurrency bubble. I don't think it's a crypto bubble, I just think there's a lot of FOMO going around in Dogecoin, and if you made a lot of money, just be careful, try to, you know, sell some of it, capture some of those gains, but otherwise, keep hustling, keep staying fresh. Keep investing and stay awkward. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I don't know, eat some candy.